Good afternoon, esteemed guests. Welcome to K11 Conversations. I'm Sabrina Lowe, the Features Editor of Tatler Hong Kong. It's my pleasure to be the moderator of the day. K11 Conversations is a multimedia platform dialogue series where we discuss the intersection between creativity, culture, and innovation. In line with K11's social mission to incubate talent, propagate culture, and push the new frontier of art. Today's discussion is supported by Artisine, a new digital media platform representing a progressive voice for the future of art, culture, and Web3. We're very honored to be joined by Dr. Adrian Chang, the founder of K11 Museum, Kevin Poon, the founder of Wow Gallery, and Greg Ito, Tita Winnie-Leg, and Alfonso Gonzalez, three participating artists of the exhibition today. May we now first invite Kevin and Adrian onto the stage. Thank you so much for joining us today, Kevin and Adrian. For the first part of the show, I would like to focus more on how you bring about this exhibition and maybe the concept of the whole exhibition itself. Maybe first of all, can both of you tell me what inspired this exhibition and why is it called Hot Concrete? I'm always a, a big fan of what Adrian does. And a year ago, we had a dinner. Uh, actually, it was his birthday. And um, he was like, you know, I really want to do a show. He gave me an opportunity to do a show here, basically. And then um, I contacted Melanie and Greg, who's in the, who's right here. Um, and we put together a show of all LA artists that we really love. And that's how everything started. Just wanted to bring good energy to the space and lots of uh, inclusivity. Yeah, uh, so, so last year when we were talking uh, at the restaurant, I realized that what he has been doing is really matches K11's vision in incubating uh, emerging artists around the world um, and also try to create a new art frontier uh, for Hong Kong and creating a, a, a better ecosystem. So uh, because our visions matched, I thought, uh, and I've been very admiring uh, his work that he's been doing, uh, all the exhibitions that he has been hosting, I thought it was He's the only person that uh, I think K11 will, will want to work with uh, on this front. Um, so as a result, we, we just basically just, just kick it off very quickly, yeah, right? Yeah. So it was like, oh, yeah, we should do it. And then we started to doing, doing it for a year. I got to say, you are both experts of your own field. Well, Adrian, you found it like a cultural hub. And for Kevin, you found it a contemporary art gallery. And you both play quite similar, but at the same time, different roles. Maybe from the perspective of your roles, tell us, what is your observation of the art development scene in Hong Kong today? Well, I think thanks to Adrian, it's really popping right now. You know, he's the only one really doing stuff out here. So just happy to be here, play a small part. You know, Greg's here, Tita, Alfonso, um, you know, D, um, Veronica. They're all superheroes in my mind. And to be able to do a show like this is a dream come true. What about Adrian? So for, uh, for K11, I think since 2008, when we started the brand, we were trying to um, make art for the mass. We want everyone to be able to access art. And at that time, no one understands what I'm talking about. What, what, what do you mean by museum retail? What do, you, what do you mean by culture, propagating culture while you're doing business? How do you attract high traffic? No one understands that. So that's 14 years ago, OK? Um, and if you look at Hong Kong art development, it has been evolving for so long, right? So we are the pioneer of culture commerce. We have an art foundation that is nonprofit that propagates art, design, culture, and really cross-pollinating different forms of creativity. So not just contemporary art. We're looking into music. We're looking into performance art, architecture. We're looking into Everything. different types of things that cross because everything is creativity. And everyone has creativity. And everyone has its own imagination. It's depending on how you manifest it. And yes. depends on there is a portal or a platform that you can exhibit it. That's all. But no one is celebrating this because either it's because of COVID, or people are too busy. So what we want people to celebrate creativity, celebrate imagination. And that has always been my vision for K11 for the past 14 years, since 2008. And from the, from the beginning phase, no one understands what I was talking about, to now people start to appreciate a little bit of uh, how we actually create this ecosystem, this Silicon Valley of culture. Uh, I, th I think Hong Kong art development has improved a lot. 
And what about when it comes to, say, for example, um, have you been interacting with some of the visitors of your shows? Um, what was the response like, and maybe visitors to your mall as well? Did they ever tell you that, um, say, for example, um, maybe some of them were, weren't so fascinated by art in the first place, but then after coming to K11 or maybe coming to WOW Gallery, what were their responses so far? I mean, I just think that, you know, culture is so important, and it's not just about consuming it. It's about, you know, I think art makes people happy. So I think in that sense, you know, people all just want to be happy. And through that, you can see, you know, whether it's a struggle or whether it's expressing yourself, I think everyone has that creativity inside. And hopefully that inspires you to be a little bit creative and not just follow what people think. Definitely. So for me, I think, you know, as I said, art is for the mass, right? it's for people. Because everyone has deserves to experience art, creativity, and culture. So what we want to do is to enrich uh, people's daily lives through the power of innovation, creativity, and also culture. Yeah, and break down the barriers of art, you know. And speaking of, you know, like breaking the barrier, if I can expand this to kind of like a larger concept, it's definitely such a barrier to break when it comes to the times of the pandemic. I mean, it's definitely not easy to organize such a great show um, internationally in the times of the pandemic. How did the two of you pull it together? Well, he, you know, I think Adrian just had the vision and then he has a very capable team of people working for him, like Jilly, Catherine, and we just made it happen. Pretty much Zoom every week with Greg. Every week we have Friday Zoom and his baby would be crying, my baby would be crying, and then we were trying to figure out how to do this and get the shipping. And these works are all the biggest works some of these artists have made. You know, like Veronica, she's gonna have a, a solo booth at Freeze. Uh, Greg, you know, he's collected by museums around the world. Tita Whitney just came from Armory, just had a very, very successful show. Alfonso, also, you know, like super big fan of what he does. Mario Alaya, Sayer Gomez, you know, the Peter Shire, the list goes on. What about for the experience um, for you, Adrian? Oh, it has been very uh, memorable. A good journey that we started, and we're going to do it every year, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. It was really fun last night. I mean, if you guys didn't come, then maybe <laughs> you missed it. But next, next year. Have there been any challenges during the creative process or uh, in the process of bringing together this exhibition? Because just now you talked about the process as if it was, a, oh, quite easy, but I'm sure there must be a lot of challenges, right? Yeah, I mean, getting people to get on, on board and see the vision, you know, and a lot of people didn't know what we were trying to do, but now they come to the space, they see it, they're like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, museum quality. And uh, also in the process of coming, uh, bringing the show together, I'm sure it's quite a challenge if you have to look at the paintings, maybe virtually, and have to talk to the artists on Zoom before you put together this in-person show. Tell me, what was the process like, and was it difficult to pick artworks virtually? Well, I flew to LA. My wife wanted to kill me, but I, I took a trip um, there, uh, met up with Greg, So and Taylor, and then I showed Adrian some works. He's like, these are great, these, you know, not so great, you know, and then we kind of vibed it out. What about for Adrian? Were you also a part of the process of looking for the artworks? Kind of. <laughs> we know what he likes, you know, so we, we kind of can kind of come to, you know, an agreement. He likes really cool stuff, so we have similar. Mm -hmm. You know, he ha obviously has way better taste, but like, you know, I'm, I'm still learning. <laughs> Now, um, thank you very much, Adrian and Kevin, for your insights into you know, K-11s and WOW Gallery's visions and roles in bringing art to the community. May we now invite um, Adrian to leave the stage first? Great. And thank Kevin, you. please stay behind. We'll have more with you. Now, we'll come into the second part of this um, K-11 talk. So we're going to dive deeper into the artworks and the curatorial direction. Let us now invite the three artists onto the stage. They are? Greg Ito, Greg, Tita Whitney Lake, and Alfonso Gonzalez. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking your time today. So to start with, um, this year we actually have 30 artists and like 55 pieces of artworks, am I correct? It's actually a huge number. Um, maybe can you first tell me, what is your selection criteria when it comes to um, you know, including which artists for this exhibition? And what is the curatorial direction? Well, you know, I think Greg is just the hub. He's like, you know, the culture man in LA. So he, not only does he know he have great taste, but he takes care of his people. So I think a lot of people really like him and want to work with him. And you know, he's global, so people are like, oh, 
I want to go to Asia, and then they just go to Greg. And then, you know, Greg then thinks about it, and then he's like, hmm, you know, like maybe. But basically, he's the man, you know, and so he can tell you more about it. Thank you. Um, so my name is Greg Ito. I'm originally from Los Angeles. Uh, so my roots go very deep into the community there. Uh, my wife, Karen Galloway, she's a big part Karen. of my life. And right really um, is my rock and, you know, is a big inspiration for all of our activities in the art scene in Los Angeles. Um, I grew up around art my whole life. So when I'm in a room like this, seeing all these artworks, I really feel like I'm at home in a room full of people that I know. And, you know, Kevin's been um, very much like family uh, to, to So and Taylor and what we've been building. And, uh, you know, what Adrian was saying about artwork being accessible is really important to us. Um, I feel that art should be accessible to everybody, as well as people who want to participate in the art world. So, you know, when Karen invited me and Kevin invited me to show work in, a, in this context, it really was inspirational because it was it's so inclusive to so many different artists from different backgrounds, different levels in their career. Um, I was just, you know, very happy to be a part of the whole thing. Yeah. Now, um, Kevin, I understand that you were born and raised um, in Hong Kong and L.A. You, were, you also grew up in L.A., yeah, correct? I spent some time in L.A., uh, I think 1999 to 2004. Mm -hmm. And for our three artists, um, you have been um, or maybe have worked in L.A. before. So I was wondering if all of you can tell me a little bit about kind of like the difference and similarities between Hong Kong and L.A. as kind of like um, the hubs for art. Well, just my first impressions from last night, it's, it seemed like it was very vibrant, you know? I feel like people out here are really hungry to, you know, get back to their normal lives now that, you know, uh, restrictions have been lifted. You know, it wasn't just a celebration of the show. I felt like Hong Kong celebrated being back together under one roof and, you know, talking about community again to have the Hong Kong community embrace us as artists, you know, and as people was really moving. Um, yeah, do you guys want to? Just yeah. to see people happy, you know? Yeah, I feel like there's really good energy here and I feel the same thing in, uh, in LA. You know, like LA is a fairly new city compared to New York or places in Europe. So it's like we're starting new stories and it's like, uh, you know, we're in charge of like these new conversations. So it's, it's really exciting. Yeah, like especially after the pandemic, there was like a big restart. So it was kind of like there was fresh dialogue. There was like new narratives. There was like spotlighting stories that should be heard, you know. So um, I think it's very exciting to see what's going to be happening, happening in the next few years. Yeah, and, uh, you know, this show, Hot Concrete, really made a spark, you know, that started a flame and reunited people again, because what Hong Kong is experiencing right now with things opening up, Los Angeles experienced that uh, last year. So, you know, I just, I just know that everyone is gonna have a really, you know, abundant and successful future. Absolutely, and I myself, are, well, I am definitely very stunned by all of the pieces here and the colors and the vibe and the messages that they're bringing. Maybe, can each of the artists tell me a little bit about um, the stories behind some of your favorite or highlighted pieces um, in this exhibition so that, you know, our visitors can also take a look at the pieces up close uh, later on? Yeah, um, so a lot of the artists in the show are good friends of mine and my girlfriend's in the show as well, so I watched her create like the ceramic work that's here and the other one on the other side. I watched them come to life from, you know, just the vision, just the sketch to being in Hong Kong and as well as uh, some of the other work, um, like uh, there's these two paintings here on the, the next area. That's a, a studio mate of mine, Sonia and uh, Mario Ayala on the other side who, who did like some signage, like tow truck signs. I share studios with them. so. We were in conversation talking about what we were going to show, and uh, it was, it, you know, it, it all starts with like an idea, and it's great to see it here. What about for you, Tita? Uh, you know, actually, I'm a big fan of Alfonso, and the first time yeah. I saw him was in Chinatown at South Willard. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it's really amazing to be having a show with him now. And um, Jaime Munoz is another one, and it's like 
you know, through these artists, I've learned the landscape of Southern California and like the yeah. other cultures that I've like, I've like, I, I've, I've, I was the neighbors, but I've actually never said hi, you know, it's kind of like that. So um, seeing this exhibition, 30 artists, like, you know, it's just only like the surface of And you're, what's now what. you're in Hong Kong doing shows globally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we're yeah. lifelong friends, so it's yeah. amazing. Yes. What about for you, Great? I was uh, watching and participating in all the Zoom calls, and we have a million group chats and <laughs> for like over a year now. And, um, you know, I myself and a lot of the artists in the show made work specifically for this show. You know, a lot of the artists made some of the largest works they've ever created. You know, this painting that I painted here is the largest painting that I produced this year. So for me, that's a very monumental, uh, you know, contribution. Um, but that's the thing, like what they were saying is like, we are a f one large family in LA and we all inspire one another and participate in each other's practice. There's a very, um, just great dialogue between all the artists. So when you look at the room around you, this is an inside look at what's currently going on in Los Angeles. And it's not focused on market stars or who's selling for the most. This is real, this is honest and sincere. And um, again, you know, I'm just thankful for Hong Kong to have us here and KP and Adrian and Karen Galloway and you know just the whole team has been really amazing to work with. And then I also think that you know one of the major things about um, and one of the most incredible things about how artists are able to actually turn say for example trying and challenging times into creativity into their power. Um, maybe for the artists can you tell me has the pandemic affected your work life or your practice in any way? Yeah, um, my work deals with landscape and, you know, since the pandemic, the landscape has changed, you know, whether it's businesses closing or new businesses coming, you know, from that. So, yeah, I feel like um, that's what, you yeah, know, that's what I'm constantly doing. So these past few years were unprecedented times for me or, you know, all of us really. And uh and, and I feel like it shows in the work. For me, the when the pandemic hit, like the Black Lives Matter was happening, there's also anti-Asian hate. So this year, it really feels like celebrating the, the other narrative of America. So I'm an Asian diaspora American, and I think the pandemic really like allowed that narrative to be heard. Um, so uh, I just really took off last year. So this has been an amazing experience. We, you guys are talking about access, and that's actually something you know everybody is struggling for um, to to show the world what a community looks like this on this other side of the world. And what about you, Greg? Well, the pandemic for me was really challenging, but also very popping during very the pandemic. Very gratifying. Well, for me, it's like that's when. Uh, my wife and I started our family. You know, we had a daughter. Her name is Spring. You know, cutest, she's our cutest girl. Our our ray of of light and hope. And it's also during the pandemic when when my wife proposed to open the gallery and start a family business. And you know, yeah, like Kevin says, yo, your you know your work was popping, and it, that's it was only I was only able to produce good work because. The inspirations in my life were so strong that like there's no way I couldn't make art not about my family and that really shaped me as a human on like a deep level because you know the intentions in my life became more focused on family values and cultivating you know like relationships that really mean something to me and um, yeah just like really just knowing what's most important to me, which is family and, you know, expanding my, uh, my circle of friends and, you know, within my life. How do you foresee um, the future of the art scene, both in Hong Kong and in LA? Well, you're sitting here, like, with the superheroes of the art scene, like Jilly right here, she's K-11 foundation head, you know, Catherine, Wing, 
Kareem Azar in the back, Henry from UBS Bank. You know, these guys are the pioneers. Chingy from Wow Gallery Singapore, Karen from LA, you know, Edward Chu in the back doing the art artisan and 10 other things. You know, Moser watches, you know, collaborative efforts. And Sandy, you know, just uh, Ben over there, you know, big takeover. So I think the future is in everyone's hands, really. You know, you just have to apply yourself. What about for our artists? Yeah, I, I feel the same way, you know. I feel like everybody has the capability to change, you know, and a community can only be shaped within itself. So people have to participate, you know, like, you know. Show us up, you know, and you just don't think about, like, what is it in it for me? Like, just do good stuff. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Mm. I also see it as an opportunity to engage in, like, a powerful dialogue, you know? <laughs> like, just kind of put something in the forefront and, like, just have force the situation. That's also an exciting way. Because you like portal, because you kind of, this is like a portal, a platform. Yeah. And like, it's interesting that we talk about today, but we always, always end up talking about the past, you know, dressing the past so that we can like figure out what the future could actually look like for us. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, this show is an example of that. You know, it wouldn't have, this show couldn't exist and we couldn't be here today if it wasn't for, for all everyone here. the hands that, contributed their time and their energy outside yeah. of their own personal life to be able to like do something bigger than themselves and you know yeah like Kevin said you just have to show up and and you got to put in put in that time to to really yeah. shape and they flew all the way out here to to bring a, a slice of you know good energy mm -hmm. you know Tangi in the back spending four like non-sleep days putting a catalog together like just like you know that's how we do it do you have anything to add to that, Alfonso? Yeah, I mean, you just, you just got to do it, and, and amazing things happen. You know, it, it, even for this, it feels like everything aligned. Uh, when when the idea was first brought up, there was still a seven-day quarantine, and then then the three-day when we got our tickets, and then after, you know, now it, it was like that was that was lifted. So everything sort of works out if you just put in the effort and put the first steps to make it happen. And Priscilla in the back over here, you know, wouldn't have been possible without her because she, you know, talked to everybody, got, you know, and her boyfriend, Mr. B, for letting her, like, wake up early and, like, you know, do the Zoom calls and go to sleep super late. That's wonderful to hear. And um, thank you so much for all your insights today. Now I'm going to open the floor to um, questions. If any one of you have any burning questions you would like to ask any of our speakers here today, now is your chance. Um, Johnny in the back, you know, doing, uh, documenting everything for, for the global audience. You know, there's a lot of superheroes in the crowd. Like Absolutely. Ethan, you know, he doesn't say much, but he's doing every small little thing, you know, like, and he's learning a lot. And one day he might curate a show. Maybe Ben first, but you know. <laughs> the lady at the back? Hi, um, I have a question. I, I'm not sure if you mentioned this in the start because I came a little bit late, but um, um, what, why is it called Hot Concrete? Why is a show named That's Hot Concrete? That's a good question. Yeah, so um, when we first proposed to do this show, it was after uh, Karen opened the gallery. So it was the first show for this family-run space. And what we wanted to do is, since the quarantine just lifted in Los Angeles, we wanted to bring people back together. So we focused on bringing our friends and family into one show to kind of reunite everybody. And, uh, you know, it just came naturally. Hot Concrete, I think for a lot of us that grew up in LA, it's something that we're surrounded by at all times. You know, we all had to go to PE class and sit on, like, asphalt that was, like, 200 degrees. Same and as Hong Kong, you know? <laughs> But, um, you know, it's more about an energy. So, you know, Hot Concrete is an energy that I feel Los Angeles just shines so brightly. And also, you know, all the artists are just, you know, full of that energy as well. Um, but yeah, it's more of a feeling. Mm. Anyone else would like to ask a question? Oh. For those of us living in Hong Kong, what we can usually hear about or access from the LA art scene is really more about 
institutions or really big names, but it would be amazing to hear from you guys about other like artist-run spaces or more independent art initiatives. Like It's already great to hear about Soane Taylor, so if you could share some of your LA favorites with us, that would be cool. There's a new space that opened. Uh, it's like an artist-run space, La Pau, L-A-P-A-U. In the same building, another really great gallery, um, Commonwealth and Co Council. They do really great stuff. Charlie James Gallery up in Chinatown. Well, yeah, it, there, there is a lot of artist-run initiatives in Los Angeles. I feel like since LA is such a large landscape, a lot of these projects are very kind of sporadic in, in how they operate. You know, LA, like, it cultivates a different kind of uh, activation. Uh, but yeah, La Pau Gallery is great. Uh, there's La Loc yeah, Gallery. La Loc Studios. It's like um, a studio space that has an exhibition mm -hmm. space. Commonwealth and Council is amazing. Murmurs is really incredible. Carly Packer Gallery is really special. And, uh, you know, when, when it comes to all these spaces and the artists, like, I feel like we all are friends. So there's a lot of overlap in, in our initiatives. Like, even Alfonso did a pop-up that was curated by him and his wonderful partner, D. Alvarado. Um, you know, Tita has also helped influence uh, younger artists to be shown in, in galleries. Um, you know, so really, uh, there's so Submit much happening work. in L.A. Yeah, but... You know, I think that's a good point where you can only see so much at the surface, uh, but what we hope is that this show inspires people to dig a little bit deeper. And, um, and hopefully we'll set up some type of mentorship, you know, with Jilly and, 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 and you know, mm -mm. cultivate that energy. Yeah. But, I a think, lot of, yeah. but I think, like, one of the, the things that I learned when trying to show art and be an artist was, um, you, you know, just to sort of do it yourself and... You don't necessarily need a space. You don't need or need, you know, like if you have a vacant garage or something like that, that works. You just get a group of friends together who uh, are making art that you're inspired by and you just sort of make it happen. That, that was, those were my first ways of showing and I feel like I still try to carry that energy in what I do now. Um, and, and I think that's the most powerful thing because it's, it's, uh, we have the power to do that, you know, so, yeah. Yeah, Alfonso hosted an art show in his backyard when he was painting at his house, and it, it also exhibited a lot of the artists that were in this show, too. Um, but yeah, like, I think DIY energy is, is very strong in Los Angeles. I want to ask you, actually, you and Karen, that being, like, black-owned and also Asian-owned gallery in LA, how does that, how does that feel? Um, I feel like me and Karen don't really think about that that much, you know? I feel like in terms of labels, we just want to be known for doing projects that are special. Um, you know, yeah, we are a multicultural household, but we don't necessarily focus on that. Uh, you know, I feel like we just want to participate in the world as as humans, as equal with everybody else. And I certainly uh, think it's like a fresh perspective, though. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Super fresh. Mm. We should have time for one more question. Is anyone, um, does anyone have a question here? I have a question. Sure. Are, are you an artist? Are you guys artists uh, or trying to be or thinking about it? You guys should definitely, you know, talk to Greg after. Yeah. Absolutely. Like more engagement, like you said just now, is about like yeah. doing, doing it. Awesome. Um, so if there is no more question, perhaps um, let's Thank give you. a big round of applause to all, all of our speakers today. And, and special thanks to uh, Connie. Yeah. Absolutely. April. Yep. And also thank you, um, Artisine. You. Oh, mm. uh, you're thank welcome. You. Thank you. <laughs> and thank you, Artisine, for supporting this episode of KLF and Conversations. For more topics like this that dissect the future of art, culture, and Web3, visit artisine.com or download the Artisine app. For more K11 conversations on topics of creativity, culture, and innovation, follow K11 Musea on Instagram and Twitter for the latest updates. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.